Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, the adaptable, the courageous, the totally doesn't smell like fish sticks, Dr. Yukon Suckett. That's right, Yukon Suckett. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So tonight I am coming to you from my secret underground headquarters deep in the Amazon rainforest. Yes, thank you, people from Brazil who come and pay attention. Um, and I'm bringing you a deck that I've titled Mr. Haste. And that really just means mono red haste. But uh, yeah, Mr. Haste. And I picked this deck up off of, where did I get it from here? I got it from uh, MTGA Zone. And uh, I thought, you know what it was? I saw Creepy Puppeteer. And I thought, I've been wanting to play with Creepy Puppeteer. And, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with the other uh, cards in here. I played with them in various incarnations of various reddish kind of decks or mono reds. But Creepy Puppeteer, that sounds like fun. Uh, so here we are. We got this deck. And uh, let's take a look at it, see what's in it. At the low end, we've got uh, Kumano faces Kakazan. And uh, as he comes into play, it deals one point of damage to each opponent and Planeswalker they control. Suck it everybody and all of your other dudes. Then on turn two, whenever you cast your next creature spell that turn, enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it, making your guy stronger. That is fantastic. And lastly, you get out a hasty 2-2, two, two, and if a creature dealt damage would die that turn, you exile it instead. So fantastic. There we go. We got a bunch of speed. We got creature pump, and we got an, an extra point of damage being done for one red mana, right? That is a great investment there. We got play with fire. So for one mana, you're doing two points of damage to any target. So in a deck like this, which looks like it's mostly about haste, you are looking to either clear the path so your hasty guys can get through, or you're just going straight to people's faces. Just going for it. And this card has that ability. Plus, I love it when devils are throwing little fiery shit at people. That looks so great. Uh, we got Voldalaren Epicure. This is probably the most boring looking card in this deck. I mean, I almost wanted just to toss it just because he just looks. This is not in the theme of this deck. Not hasty at all. He doesn't have haste, but he does have the ability to cause one point of damage to each opponent when he enters the battlefield. So at least he's doing something. And he only costs you one, and you got a 1-1 one, one otherwise. And he creates a blood token, which allows you to pay one, tap it, discard a card, sacrifice this artifact, and draw a card. So a little bit of something. For one mana, that's a lot going on there, and I'm happy for him. I just wish the art was cooler because he looks way too chill. We got Bloodthirsty Adversary. Now, she is right here with us, and she's got haste, and she's a 2-2. And if you can wait until you had five mana, then you'd be able to get a plus one, plus one counter on her. And um, then you can exile that many... Instance or sorceries, the mana value with three or less from your graveyard and copy them without paying any of their mana costs, which means three or less instant sorcery is going to leave you with Royal Eruption or Play with Fire. And uh, so that's either like three points of damage or two points of damage. And that's that's cool because all that's going to matter. Everything else is, I mean, this is so fast. Onesies and twosies points of damage matter a lot. We got Lizard Blades. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, one, one for two. He's got double strike and he can be an equipment that you throw onto somebody else and that gives them double strike. So either you put this guy out and you start pumping him up or you put him onto some other guy that's pumping up himself and, or, you know, just whatever your the situation demands. The nice thing about these things, the thing I love about the most is that as soon as whatever they're attached to dies, they just fall to the ground and they're just regular creatures ready to go at it. So these guys are are there's not like a they're for an equipment they are the best equipment that's out there we got royal eruption which does three points of damage at sorcery speed but does it to any target and this is super bad you got seven mana you can you can make it do five points of damage instead so that's that's rough two for three or five for seven man that is rough but whatever you know if you got seven mana you got nothing to do with it this deck this could finish the game, right? This could easily finish the game. We got Reckless Stormseeker. I mean, every red deck should have Reckless Stormseeker in it. She is so good. Uh, 
she's a two three for three at the beginning of your combat target creature which includes human werewolf gets plus one plus zero and gains haste until the end of the turn um i always forget that she's not hasty unto herself but yeah you should usually just pick herself she becomes a three three with haste she's attacking on the turn she comes out you know it depends what you got going on but that's that's the usual opening move then if it becomes night bound because whatever it is uh somebody doesn't like play a card on their turn something like that then it becomes a three four and target creature gets plus two plus O and trample and haste until the end of the turn there's so much goodness to this card it is fantastic it helps out other creatures it makes things big it gives them haste if they don't already have it i mean we have very few creatures that don't have haste but uh reckless storm sleeper is there to help them out we got the shatter skull charger so a four three for three which is fantastic but it comes out trample and haste that's not a but that's an and and it's fantastic again it says that um at the beginning of your end step, if it doesn't have a plus one, plus one counter on it, you turn it back to your hand. Believe it or not, that's actually a good thing a lot of times. Because then it can't be board wiped by somebody as a sorcery. Uh, they can't do any like creature kills at sorcery speed. They have to have an instant to be able to take it out. A lot of people don't play that. A lot of people don't play that game, right? They can't exile it because it's not on the board. It's not there. So... Um, you know, plus if like somebody were to like pin him down with something, make you know, chain him up or whatever, he'd come back to your hand and you just play him again. And he'd have haste. He's good to go. So even though he's expensive, having to play them every single time, that's three mana you're not getting back. A lot of times it's well worth it. But you have a lot of other dudes in this deck who will put plus one, plus one counters on him for free. Or you can play the kicker cost, which would be five total, and he'll come out with a plus one counter on himself if you want him to stay in play. But that trample counts a lot. You can start pumping him up. You're going to start trampling over. You're going to get your damage through. That's what matters, right? We got the creepy puppeteer. So you got hasty 4-3. And whenever it attacks, if you attack with exactly one other creature, then you may have that other creature's power and toughness become 4-3. So where that's really going to matter, you know, it's not you know, Thundering Raju, maybe. Not Skull Charger. He's already there. This one, yeah, you can go up to four three on that one. That one could be that one could go. Lizard Blades would be a great place for it. And also either of these two guys right here. So you, most of your deck could really use becoming a four three. That means you're attacking with at least eight points of damage, right? And uh if they already have plus one plus one counters, they keep those and those get added on top. We got the Thundering Raju, which costs you four to get out. These two are the most expensive guys you got in the entire deck. Thundering Raju, if you put him out, he's a three three with haste. And whenever he attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature control, making them modified, right? Then Thunder Runner deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of modified creatures you control other than Thundering Raju. So this guy modifies dudes. Who else modifies dudes? Uh, the middle part of, Kuma of Kumano Faces Kakazan modifies dudes. She can come out with plus one counters on it if you pay enough. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. It, this guy will pump stuff out, but it's not a token. It won't make a modified. Still, Thundering Roger, if he comes out, he can make his own modified dudes. It just takes a little bit more time. That's direct damage that they cannot avoid. Uh, we got four Den of the Bugbear because one of the great things about this is that if you, know, if you have essentially it and four other mana, you can start playing it. It's a 3-2, which in this deck is a lot, right? Uh, at which point then it puts out an additional plus one, plus one. And it's tapped and it's attacking. So pretty much it's got haste, but you know, it's a tapped and attacking at that point. <laughs> so uh yeah, there you go. It you got a lot going on. That's a lot of people and it's hard to block. We also have these uh the what was it, just one of them? Oh, these uh Kamagawa Redlands, which puts out two hasty spirit one one tokens. Great, right? Even more dudes to throw onto the fire. And 19 regular planes to round things out there. So this deck is just pretty much just, you're just throwing out fireworks and lighting the match. It just goes to town. You just got to hope that you hit harder and faster than everybody else. Okay? So let's take this one out and see if we can make it burn. All right, and we're playing against Masakai Ruka. Masakai Ruka. All right, four mana. All right, we're keeping it. I'm hoping this is awesome.
Uh, let's go ahead and put this guy out. You can probably do an additional point of damage that the Kumano cannot. Ooh, we're getting way too much mana at this point. What does this cost me? We'll chew up a mana, see if we can get something better than that. All right, that is definitely better than that. Goes on curve, too. That's funny. I was thinking the, the Reckless Storm Key Seeker had haste unto himself. <laughs> so yeah, I played that wrong. Sorry, everyone. Which is better? They're gonna attack him with multiple dudes. Let's just throw this one out. Uh, Terror Reckless Torment and Seeker. Plus one to in a turn. Yeah, yeah, you. That's fine. All attack. Let's put it out on the Vampire. Now our that double striker is gonna die. Alright, we just gotta sneak one person through on our next turn without him gaining any more life. Unfortunately, he's gaining a life right there. There's some life gain. Don't like that. I don't like that either. Ooh, that's 10 life he's going to gain out of the deal. A lot more than that. What is that, 14? All right, can we go to crazy town? And we did. Crazy town. Population us. All right, playing against... Dark Phoenix 201 or 209. Gotta get one out of that one. And we got three mana. Uh, let's keep it. We'll try to be mean with the Royal Eruption. Royal. We got a lot of turns of doing nothing for a red for a red aggressive deck. Somebody wants to land. All right, here we go. Let's get dangerous. All attack. All right, now we just got to pay for the Shadow Skull Charger every single turn. Got okay, three. All right, we got him down to ten. Uh, we get some more of those little little dorks out there. I'm sure he's got some instants or sorceries in hand. He's only got three mana, though. Can't be too much. Uh, four. Now he can play the entire world. Not an instant or sorcery.
Oh, let's go for the double striker. All right, he's back down to where he was at. And he has six life left. I'm rocking 10. He's got some blockers there. Does this do damage to anybody, though? Any target. So I can do, with two, I can do three points of damage, huh? All right, so there's five. Here's three. These with two. We'll swing in with everybody. Uh, let's pump up the trap, the trampler. All right, and then Royal Eruption is going to finish the game out. Of course, he's going to gain life, isn't he? Ooh, he's going for it. All right, he's got nothing and three life left. This is three life. There we go. Good game, Suckerfish. Good game. All right, we're playing against Mind Falls. Mind Falls. I don't know what that means. Three mana, that's a good amount. And we are going to rock it. One, two, three, four. Uh, we'll start off with that one. A touch is precious. All right. Uh, this is not the greatest for us. Two. Unfortunately, that is it. Alright, so we've got a Reckless Storm Seeker. Let's go for it. Gotta keep up that pressure. I'll attack. Kill ourselves a dog. Nope. How dare you? I don't even recognize that card. All right, here comes Thundering Roku. All attack. You coming down fast from miles above me? That smells like a doom scar. That dude's gonna pop it soon, though. Hopefully, I can royal. He's down to one. Here we go. One. -ah. Good game. <laughs> Victory. Okay, we're playing against Brain in a Jar. Brain in a Jar. Two, 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 two. Eh, let's keep it. Uh, this is probably being a little on the dumb side for me. Uh, let's go ahead and start straight off with a little face attraction. Yep, I do like getting a third mana. That's kind of what I was looking for there. Come on in with two... Uh, You can try to kill her. 
All right, we go and. What does this guy need anyway? He needs a uh, four, so you have five mana people can play a hobgoblin cave. Chill out with the play on fire. Use it to wipe a board here. What are we playing against Rakdos or something? Nah, it's full on. It was a Jund or something. That guy is a little on the thick side. Play chicken. Come right at you. You're going to swerve. I'm down to seven. Lizard blade is going to cost me four. I could double up on somebody. You're going to have to jump in front of that. Ideally, we draw a mana on the next turn. If we get one more mana, we are in a really good position with a lot of avenues towards success. Like, we could activate the bugbear. We could play lizard blades, put it on somebody, and play with fire. We could put out another thundering Raju and then play with fire. Basically, that fifth mana is a lot to us. Yeah, we got it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just spread the love a little bit. Because these guys are going to give that additional pump. With uh, Each one will shoot for three, I believe. There we go. And he's down to three. I'm going to get at least seven through. Does he have anything sneaky? There we go, Brain in a Jar. See you around. All right, so here we are with Mr. Haste, <laughs> AKA Mono Red Haste. And uh, I've been playing this, you know, every once in a while on this channel, things like this. And this one was slightly different. Uh, really, it was Creepy Puppeteer was the card that attracted me to it, right? And uh, it's funny, I really don't play with it that much when it comes out. It's great. It's a great card. It just that, like, you kind of, it says, if you attacked with exactly one other creature, this comment. And so the time that I did have it in my hand and I didn't play it, it was because I had a lot more than one dude and I didn't want to choke it back just for this thing's ability. So, and I had Thundering Raju, and that guy was, in that situation, a lot more useful. Um, so let's talk about this deck. Was it great? Yeah, man, this deck is fan-freaking-tastic. Like, right now, I think I've played it, let's see, I've played it uh, nine times. Its its score right now is 9-0. and oh. I got 100% victories nine times in a row with this thing. So it's this fantastic burn deck. I mean, it's... It's a little boring just because you just kill people and then the game's over. I, I know there's ways that they can get around it. There's If they had a little bit of good control and good luck at the beginning of the game, they'd be able to smoke you. But so far, I haven't found anybody to smoke me. And we're just pulling like wings off of flies here is what it feels like. Um, there are a little bit of some tricks in here that allows you to bypass the stuff that people are trying to do. It doesn't seem like there should be, but you got them. You got some, right? Um, what are the great cards here. Uh, number one, Shatter Skull Charger. I would, you would think that having to pay for the same card over and over again would be a problem. But, you know, for some reason, it works out. This is the reason why it works out great is because they can't shoot him. He's not sitting there. They can't do anything against him. So if they don't have, like, an instant creature kill, you know, board wipes aren't going to kill him. Uh, the sorcery-based ones aren't going to kill him. It's just... This, this guy that comes out does a truckload of damage. He's got haste and trample. It's just insane. He is really good, and I'm willing to pay for him over and over again. But this deck does pile itself up quickly. Uh, the Lizard Blades, those guys can get dangerous fast. They didn't. They need to kill him, even though they're just a stupid 1-1 one, one for 2, right? Um, but, you know, you throw this onto one of your other guys, and suddenly they're doing twice as much damage. 
this guy becomes like six or if you put the plus one counter on it it'll do eight eight points of damage right um plus if you got creepy puppeteers in here you know and you're attacking with something small like a bloodthirsty adversary even lizard blades itself suddenly you're doing eight points of damage from just lizard blades because he's got a base power of four or three you start putting more plus one counters on them or you have reckless storm seeker pumping them up whatever's got that lizard blades on the lizard blades on it or is maybe a trampler you know it's up to you what is the most advantageous in that situation so this deck has got a lot of potential and it's got a lot of utility uh, it's all in the creature attacking situation and the amount of damage that people are doing if someone's gaining life like crazy you probably have a hard time killing them because i mean you you are overwhelming them but the longer the game goes on the worse position you're in um Royal Eruption is great because it targets any but you know any target, which means players, planeswalkers, creatures. And that three is usually great, but you know, I mean seven for five is a hard sell in my book. But if I had seven mana and nothing better to do with it, you betcha I'd be using a kick on this to do five points of damage. Absolutely. Play with fire gives you a little bit of ability to manipulate your deck in case you really need something or you want to see what's coming up next. You know, the Boldrin Epicure. I thought this guy's kind of dumb, but in reality, getting that extra point of damage when it comes into place and just having a one-one for either a blocking or even just doing one point of damage in a deck like this, it is incredibly useful. Just that getting out a creature early and having it do some damage and give you a little bit of extra options with that blood token, it's worth it. I mean, just you're playing within your first five turns. And if you get beyond that, you're probably going to start losing. So you're not going to be playing with exceptionally, like, gigantically great cards. And this guy fits a good, you know, he fits a good uh, slot there for you. Thundering Raju, of course, you're fantastic. You're a fantastic guy. What's great about him is that every time that he attacks, he deals X damage to each opponent where X is the total number of modified creatures you control other than Thundering Raju. And you also put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control every time he attacks. So that means you keep creating modified creatures. There's a lot of modifications going on here, and it just makes things more and more powerful. I mean, the problem is, is you got Shatter Skull Charger coming out. He's going back to your hands, so you're losing those plus one counters. If you really want to leave him out, of course, he can put, if you put a plus one counter on him, he'll stay. You just got to worry about what kind of deck you're playing against. So let's rate this deck. Number one, is it competitive? Absolutely, it's competitive. This is probably one of the most competitive decks I have seen in a long time, right? I don't have anything that has a 9 and 0 rating on it. It's just ridiculous. Um, is it fun? Yeah. It feels like a lot of fun other than the fact that it's over quickly. That's what she said. Thank you, person who commented on my uh, last time I said it was over too quick. It's over quickly. Um, so, uh, But the good news is, is that you can play as much as you want. So just keep getting out there and go to town on people, right? um lastly is there a theme let's see we got we got spirits and giants and werewolves and creepy humans and vampires no i mean your creatures really don't meet much of a theme the real theme here is haste 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 uh that's not haste haste not haste so it's mostly hasty things which is the reason why i called it mr hate right so I'm going to give it a midline on, on theme. It's not as themed as good as it could be. Theming to me a lot of times means tribal. This is not a tribal deck. It is it is haste though. Um, Like this is haste. So there you go. But anyways, the problem is I, I'm not going to not give this deck an A+. Uh, between the fun factor and the competitiveness and the, you know, how great it is. And the fact that it's got sort of a theme. It's not taken away from that at all. This is 100% an A-plus deck in my book. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the sideboard. This is really because it was a best of three deck. I left them in there. Usually I tear this stuff out. Not, we have nothing with learn, so none of this stuff's going to show up. If you're playing best of three, there you go. You got the option to, to pull, you know, to, to trade out cards with these things over here, right? Um, you'll see those in the description of this article or of this, uh, this video. So anyways, yeah, this deck is fantastic. So I hope you end up having as much fun with this deck as I did. That is all for now. 
If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, shine on, you crazy diamonds. Later.